grab yourself a coffee and let's see if we can clarify some myths. Right, some background on this. As a result of a couple of previous videos, I'd pretty much given up on the idea of using meths with shellac, blonde shellac in particular. And if you go and look at my uh, video on the spruce, and I recommend you do so, the colour I was getting on the spruce with blonde shellac was just drab, it was just grey and dull. Couldn't really see a purple colour, but I think the reason for this is purple and the blonde yellowy uh, colour of the, the shellac are opposite each other on the colour wheel, they're complementary colours and I think they interact badly and you just end up with this drab effect, you don't have the lovely warmth of the pure shellac. Now as a result of some of the comments on these videos, and thank you, they're, they're very welcome, two things have emerged. One, I can get industrial IDA, industrial denatured alcohol, which is clear. It's, it's still okay uh, to sell cheaply because it, it can't be consumed, it's got either uh, methanol in it or it's got a bittering agent. There's, there's various formulae of, of, of the industrial stuff. But I guess because of the safety implications of being clear and possibly getting abused and people drinking it and going blind, maybe by accident, um, because methanol will blind you, wood alcohol it's called. Um, there are controls around it and you, to buy it you've got to be registered and I hope I could get registered but it seems like a lot of effort. So one of the other comments, and thank you Evan Herc for the comment, suggested that you can clarify, depurple the meths using activated carbon or activated charcoal as some people call it. I've no idea whether this is going to work, but let's give it a go. I'm going to try two coffee based methods. Uh, the first one is standard coffee filter years old. I don't drink much coffee these days. And I've got my activated charcoal. Now I understand the thing about this, the reason it's called activated is because it's it's standard carbon, should be fairly pure carbon I would have thought, um, or charcoal, and it's it's treated in such a way that it's very porous, it has a lot of little microscopic holes in it which means it has a huge surface area and I should have thought about there we go <laughs> there's a few problems opening up there we go there we go yes should have thought about this before the video right so how much how many grains do you need how many granules do you need for a decent cup of coffee it's usually one per person, isn't it? One, two, and there it all goes. Three, and is it one for the pot? Or is that making tea? There we go. Ah, oh, one for luck, there we go. And I guess I'm just going to pour it straight in. I'm going to just pour the whole lot in there and let's see what happens. Oh, I hate getting grubby stuff. I suppose it would be, wouldn't it, charcoal? Right, well, <laughs> I think this is it. There we go. It's weird. It almost looks like it's on fire and smoking. It's, it's hissing, but there's carbon dust being given off. Sort of fizzing. Well, it's clearly still purple coming out the bottom. Is it any clearer? Cheers. Mm. 
there's a fair bit of condensation on the inside of this glass, which of course will be, um, if not pure alcohol, because it will contain, I think, some of the uh, denaturants. But I'd imagine it would be clear that uh, that's not really what we're trying to achieve here in terms of uh, distillation, which of course would be illegal. So, let's see if that's made any difference whatsoever. The only way we're going to tell is by decanting it back and... Easier said than done. I have lost a significant amount of alcohol in doing that. That's interesting. I've it, this wasn't full to begin with, but I've lost almost half the alcohol. There's just a tiny spillage there. I'm astonished by that. Clearly there's still a lot of alcohol soaked into the carbon. But is there a colour difference? <laughs> I'd say no. Mm, may, uh, may, maybe a very slight difference. So, let's try the second method. A different type of coffee this time. What I'm going to do is, again, some generous amounts of activated carbon. I think that will do. the remaining mess in here and hopefully this time I can get more alcohol out because I'm going to be using this cafetiere style, plunge it down after a while and hopefully get more of the alcohol back and maybe less evaporation. I don't know how much evaporation has occurred in this uh, relatively short time. Fizzle, fizzle, fizzle. A lot of gas escaping. I guess there's lots of gas inside the carbon. It's all being displaced. I'm going to add some more. But keep a fair bit back so that we've got a good comparison. <laughs> right. Well, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to keep keep shaking it every now and then. But I guess I'm going to leave that for an hour and hope too much of it doesn't escape. I suspect really I ought to be doing this in one of the bottles. But I just thought this was a convenient way of decanting it out afterwards. Coffee time. Incidentally, all these allusions to coffee, I am in no way implying that this is drinkable. It is still really poisonous. Well, there is a level of toxicity which will be extremely bad for you. And it will also taste horrible. And it also looks like this method does not work. That is still very pink. It's 
It's also a little bit grey. <laughs> I have dissolved charcoal in there. So why don't we see whether we get the last of this out? Say dissolved charcoal, you can't get dissolved charcoal, it's suspended charcoal. So we've actually made it darker. Let's see. Let's see if we can filter that any clearer. a little bit of carbon in the bottom of this jug actually so clearly we can't get all the carbon out anyway this is turning out to be a fairly bad idea all around I think maybe if I could get a better quality filter it might be better I don't know right let's see what happens here Filters blocked actually. There's still a lot of alcohol in here. I think the carbon has blocked the filter paper. <laughs> this is taking a surprisingly long time to filter through. Still dripping. <clears throat> hmm. Doesn't look like it's clear to me. I can see no difference in that at all. Mm, actually, this one might be very slightly lighter. It might be very slightly greyer. I think there is a slight difference there. But unfortunately it looks a little bit greyer. Yeah. But certainly as a practical process, considering how much how many losses we've had, I think by the time you've filtered this clear, <laughs> if it will ever filter clear, you'll hardly be left with any of it. There is one final thing I can try, and that is I can put some activated carbon in here, seal it, and leave it for a while and see what happens. So, quite how I get carbon in <laughs> without spilling it all. I will leave that for a day or two, or a week or two, and see if it makes any difference at all. So I don't think this is going to revolutionise the way I do shellac. If this goes clear in a week's time, I may post an update on this, but there is a limit to how many videos I can make just on the subject of meths. So for me, it's back to this. Um, 
pure act uh, pure alcohol rectified spirit and this is available down the road in my uh, local Polish shop it's made in Poland and it's incredibly expensive it's 25 pounds for this half a litre bottle but it's pure it doesn't contain any toxins it won't give you headaches when you're doing your French polishing and for me maybe that's worth it I may look at getting registered to use denatured alcohol it sounds like a lot of fuss to me but maybe it's worth it I will certainly look into it but I hope this has been useful um, a negative result as far as I'm concerned um, but Stay tuned, there may be updates. So, see you around. Bye!